Okay, so let's talk about some of the impacts of intermolecular forces. So first, let's talk about boiling points. Okay, so let's define what a boiling point is. So first, a boiling point is the temperature when a solid a liquid becomes a gas. So a liquid phase goes to a gas phase, that temperature is called the boiling point. So this is really an amount of energy. Temperature is just a quantity of heat. Heat is a type of chemical energy. The boiling point is how much energy we have to put in to go from a liquid phase to a gaseous phase. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point. Because the stronger the intermolecular forces, the more these molecules are attracted to each other, the more energy you're gonna have to put in to go from a liquid phase where the molecules are close together to a gaseous phase where the molecules are more free moving and far apart. So if I gave you a list of molecules that were similar molecular weights, and that's something important to know, is that we can really only compare molecules with similar molecular weights. Because once you start comparing really small molecules with really big molecules, there's more at play than just the intermolecular forces. So for example, if you were given um, three molecules, one that just had London dispersion forces, one that just had, let's just write this out, we'll write London dispersion forces, which all molecules have, and then dipole-dipole interactions, which all polar molecules have, and then hydrogen bonds, which are special for hydrogens that are bonded to oxygen, nitrogens, and fluorines, the boiling point would increase in this direction. So the ones with the London dispersion forces would have the lowest boiling point. The one with the hydrogen bond would have the highest boiling point because stronger intermolecular forces means a higher boiling point. So let's take a step back and look at just boiling points and how those are affected um, in something called an alkane. So boiling points of alkanes. So this word alkane, this is from organic chemistry, an alkane is just a hydrocarbon. And a hydrocarbon is exactly what it says. It's a molecule made up of hydrogens and carbons. So hydrocarbons, these are nonpolar molecules. So they only have London dispersion forces for intermolecular forces. So when we are comparing the boiling point of alkanes, um, there are some good pictures of this in both your textbook and on the slides. Um, it's in section 6.2 in your textbook, and it's on slide number 13 in my PowerPoint lecture. But it shows as the molar mass increases, so as the molar mass of an alkane increases, the boiling point increases. The boiling point increases because there's more um, atoms in this molecule, so the London dispersion forces are higher. So for example, um, methane, let's just find an example. Methane, for example, 
has a lower molar mass than ethane. Ethane has two carbons, so CH4 has a lower boiling point than C2H6, which is ethane. So CH4 looks like this. versus ethane, which looks like this. So the bigger the molecule gets, the more London dispersion forces there are, the higher the boiling point. Another th thing that is true about alkanes is that the more branched they are, the more branched they are, the lower the boiling point. So for example, your textbook gives an example. Um, I'll put this over here. It shows a molecule which is called pentane. And the names and the structures of these are not important. You're not doing Lewis structures or drawing anything like that. Versus another molecule, these are called structural isomers, which means they have the same numbers of carbons and hydrogens, um, but they're just arranged differently. So both of these are C5H18. They have the same molecular weight. This one is more linear and this one is more branched. So I would say this one is more linear and this one is more branched. The one that is more linear is going to have more London dispersion forces because it's more spread out. The one that's more branched is gonna have less London dispersion forces because it's more condensed, it's more branched. So this one is going to have a higher boiling point, this one would have a lower boiling point. So I would expect you to be able to compare boiling points of alkanes based on the molar mass. The larger the molar mass, the higher the boiling point, and based on the structure being more linear or more condensed and branched. So a linear one is gonna be more spread out and have a higher boiling point. A branched one would be less spread out and have a lower boiling point. Another thing um, to pay attention to, not talking about alkanes anymore, just looking at boiling point. So boiling point is going to increase with the level of intermolecular forces. So something that has a uh, just London dispersion forces would have low boiling point and something that has a hydrogen bond would have a high boiling point. So there's an interesting um, graph in your textbook. It's figure 6.8 in your textbook. And it's also in the PowerPoint slides on slide number 19. So this is 6.8 in the book, or it is slide number 19. And this shows um, boiling points of different compounds. And you see the boiling points of water, hydro, hydrogen fluoride, and ammonia are all so much higher. And the reason for that is because hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force, so it would have the highest boiling point. So you should look at this in your textbook and also um, on the slides, but here's the, the picture and it essentially is showing, here are boiling points of, so this one it's 16, group 16 binary hydrides. So this would be like everything in that group 
And you see when you get to oxygen, H2O has a much higher boiling point. It says here it's between 350 and 400. That's because this boiling point is in Kelvin. So the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, which is 373 degrees Kelvin, which is what's on this graph. But you'll see that these look linear until you get to something with a hydrogen bond, like hydrogen fluoride or nitrogen trihydride ammonia right here. So what explains this graph right here is that hydrogen bonding is a much stronger intermolecular force. So the stronger intermolecular force is responsible for the increase in boiling point. Um, another uh, impact of intermolecular forces is with something called viscosity. Viscosity is defined as resistance to flow. So viscosity is a property of a liquid and it is essentially how thick that liquid is. That's not a good chemistry um, way to describe it, but something like maple, maple syrup would be much more viscous than something like water. Um, resistance to flow is viscosity. So like boiling point, the higher or the stronger the intermolecular force, the higher the viscosity. So if I was giving you multiple molecules and you were ranking the intermolecular forces, you would be able to predict which of those molecules would have the highest viscosity based on the intermolecular forces. So boiling, same that goes along for boiling points also goes along for viscosity. The greater the molar mass of an alkane, the higher the boiling point and viscosity. The more branched something is, the lower the viscosity, or the more linear it is, the higher the viscosity. So you'll be doing labs that investigate this, um, but boiling point and viscosity are both directly proportional to the strength of the intermolecular forces. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the stronger, sorry, the higher the boiling point or the higher the viscosity.